So tonight I will be talking about how we should see other people, especially your friends, okay, and what it is to be a godly friend in a godly friendship, okay? So we need to be honouring each other in everything we do. The whole point of this evening is called the honouring night, okay? So we need to be honouring each other in everything we do. We need to be honouring each other at every single opportunity, okay? Mainly because you should want to be the best Christian brother or sister, or the best Christian friend, okay, you can be, because that's what you're called to be. Okay, uh, in the book of Ecclesiastes, it tells us, a person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Okay, standing together in Christ will gain you victories in many, many ways. And I'm going to tell you five ways in which you can be better godly friends. And I'm not saying that you're not being, doing a fantastic job at the moment. I'm just giving you, going to give you some hints and tips to how to make yourselves uh, better godly friends to the people that are sitting around you. Okay, number one, and it sounds ridiculously easy, okay, be face to face. One of the best ways to honour each other is to actually be with each other. We spend so much time in this day and age being on Facebook, being on Twitter, sending emails, instead of actually just being together. Okay, and it sounds strange because that's my what we're used to. But that's not the way it should be. We should be face to face, okay? You should be meeting up at any opportunity because you, know, you shouldn't be sitting at home talking on Facebook. We you meet up. It's, it, sounds, it sounds simple. And you need to be doing it. Being face to face is the number one way that you can honour your Christian brothers and sisters. I've got loads of friends in America and we Skype all of the time. But it's not the same. It's not the same as being in someone's presence and being able to enjoy their company. It's just not the same. Skype is fantastic, it's free, it's even better. But it's not the same as being face to face with someone. Okay, in Exodus 3.1, it said, The Lord would speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. Okay, if you want a friendship with someone, if you want a real, authentic, godly friendship with someone, the number one rule, be face to face. Not just because I've said it, it actually says it in the word of God. Okay, uh, Lord will speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. Okay, men speak to their friends face to face. That goes for you as well, ladies. Not... Okay, number two, be influential. It's all well and good being in someone's presence, being with someone in person, in bodily form, if you're just going to speak about stuff that means absolutely nothing. Okay, if you're going to speak about, sorry to say this, One Direction, if you're going to speak about Justin Bieber, if you're going to speak about things like Call of Duty, okay, 
if you're going to speak about all that sort of stuff, okay, and you might as well not be with each other, okay, because that is not the point of a godly friendship. It's an absolute waste of time if you guys are going to get together and you're maybe talking about a bit of a girl that you fancy or a boy that you fancy or anything like that. That is not what friendships are supposed to be about. They're supposed to be influential to you and you are supposed to be influential to your friends. Okay, Proverbs 27, 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. <coughs> Okay, it's iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. You people and godly friendships need to be together, but you also need to be making yourselves better people, better versions of yourselves. Okay, talking about Call of Duty, One Direction, all that sort of stuff, may well be fun. It's not going to make you a better person. I'll tell you that for now. It's not going to make you a more godly person. Your conversations with your friends, your whole friendships need to be more influential, okay? And you need to be those person. You can't wait for the other person to be influential first. You need to be the person to make the first move. Okay, so first one was... Anyone get that first one? Face to face. Face to face, fantastic. What was the second one? Be influential. Be influential, like, fantastic. Right, we're going we're gonna to do that every time. The third one is be honest and sincere. Proverbs 27, 5 to 6 says, An open rebuke is better than hidden love. Wounds from a sincere friend are better than many kisses from an enemy. Okay, it is better for your friend or for you to be completely honest with, pers with a person, yet in a loving way, of course, but it's better for you to be a completely honest with someone than for, your, for, than for people that don't matter in your life just to, just to kiss up to you. Okay? Sometimes bad things need to be said, okay? Sometimes they actually do, okay? Because it helps us to grow and it makes us actually see things that we didn't know was going on in the first place. Okay, myself and Simon, we have a meeting every single week, okay? So Monday morning, we talk about download the day before, we talk about the previous week, talk about stuff that's going on. And sometimes I hear the words, now there's something I need to challenge you on. Okay, those words are heard probably once every two weeks. So I need to challenge you on something. Or something like that. I don't like doing this, but I need to challenge you on something. Someone will say that to me. When there's something in my character, or it's something that I've done during the week that needs to be changed. If there's something that I've done wrong, if there's anything that needs to be sculpted or moulded or anything like that. But because of the relationship that me and Simon have, because of the love that me and Simon have for each other, I know that he is saying these things in love, and he's not saying these things to, for his own benefit, or he's not making these things to make me look bad, or to make me feel sad. He's not saying anything like that. Simon is saying these things because he wants me to be a better person. And he can see a way that I can be. And he's doing it honestly and sincerely. And that is how you need to act in your friendships as well. You need to be honest and sincere. So tell me the first point. Face to face. Face to face, fantastic. Second point. And the third one was? Okay, number four. Four or five. We haven't got long to go. Stay with me. Number four is love at all times. Proverbs 17, 17 simply states, a friend loves at all times. I say that again, a friend loves at all times. Okay, love is an action. Love is also a choice. We need to make a choice to be, uh, to, to, to be loving to our friends. And not just when it's convenient for us. Not just when that you've got a spare few hours. It says at all times. Even when it puts you out. You need to be uh, loving to people at all times. That was a quick one. So what was the first one? Yeah. What was the third one? Yeah. What was the second one? Yeah. Fantastic. Fourth one? Yeah. Love at all times. Okay. Number five. Final one. We're going to close it. Okay. Don't be a friend. This carries on for the last one. Don't be a friend on your time scale. Number five is called sacrifice, by the way. Don't be a friend on your time scale. You need to be giving up your, uh, some things in your life for your friends, to show them love. 
Okay, in John 15, 13, it says, This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for his friends. For his friends. Okay, there is no greater love than that, it says. There's no greater love than to lay one's life down for his friends. You need to be there for your friends even when it costs you dearly. Even when it costs you so many things. So in that first verse that I talked about, it talked about the triple braided cord. If you, if you think about a triple braided cord, if anyone can, basically it's three singular pieces of rope that are wound together to form something strong. The first cord is a godly version of you. The second cord is your godly friend. And the third call, cord is God himself. If you get those three components, if you get a godly you, a godly friend, and God himself in your friendship, that is a triple braided cord that is not easily broken. Quickly, what are the five things? Number one. Number two. Num who said be sincere? Shut up! <laughs> What's number two? What's number three? Honest and sincere. Number four? Love all times. Thank you. That's a tron. Number five? Sacrifice. Fantastic. Okay. Everyone bow your heads. We're going to pray and then we're going to get on to some more things. Thank you so much for listening. Father, I thank you so much uh, that you have blessed me with some fantastic godly friends. I thank you for all that they do in my life. So I pray uh, in this room that there is people that are growing together to form godly friendships. I pray, Lord God, that you are raising up each one of these individuals to, to run life together and not just do it on their own. Father, I pray that they can really love each other, Father, as you want them to love each other, Father. You want them to be able to sacrifice especially for each other. So I pray that as we go uh, about our Christmas, let our, our friendships not be on social networking. Let our friendships be face to face, Father. Let us actually be able to spend time together and enjoy our lives with each other. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I believe that dessert will be served. And yay for dessert indeed. So bear with me, I'm going to go get dessert. You're